Hey guys, in today's video, we're gonna be hopefully improving our G920 Logitech steering wheel for the Xbox with a brake pedal modification. So yeah, as you know that if you have one of these wheels, either the G29 or the G920 or even the earlier models, they all have the same pedal box, which is pretty good, you know, for the price that you pay for these things and feel decent overall, you know, for the accelerators fine, the clutch is fine but the brake is really weird because it's really easy to push it and then it just hits a wall and then when it hits a wall it's really tough and a lot of times you can't even get to the bottom of it especially for like kids and stuff and it just feels very unlinear it's like really easy and then really tough so yeah hopefully we're going to be fixing that with this kit i got by true break and it's a company called axssim.com is their website so yeah i mean there are other kinds of companies that make different things but this one here looks like comes with the whole arm and the spring and everything so yeah let's go ahead and open this thing up pretty simple packaging here we get a baggie of a spring and some adapters and everything looks nicely made aluminum and over right here looks like we got the arm itself which actually has the sensor built into it, which is really cool. And it's a really high quality built part here, completely out of aluminum, looks like machined. And you guys can see here in the middle, we have the load cell looks like. There is a connector that should fit right into our original plug, which we'll be replacing. So this cost me about $70 or something, or maybe a little less, I can't remember exactly, but yeah, not cheap of course, but maybe a worthy price for, you know, getting this brake pedal right. All right, so let's set these parts to the side for now, and we'll start working on the pedal box. The first thing we need to do is remove the pedals themselves because if we don't remove them, we won't be able to get them out because this is one piece here, and these will obviously don't fit through the slots. So there are two little screws, Allen wrenches on each pedal and the size is a 2.5 millimeter so we had this pedal set for about three years or so and it's held up pretty well it is starting to rust a little bit of course we do live in a very humid and salty air environment so probably part of the reason why but yeah if you guys look at this pedals here these are really nice so this is all metal here there's a little plastic insert that goes into the metal part and for some reason i always thought these were rubbery but they're not they're just plastic so yeah very nice heavy duty pedal here kind of impressive for this budget set and also you guys can see you can actually adjust the pedal to go a little bit in or a little bit out depending how you want or back in the middle so all right so let's get these things off i'm gonna go ahead and break them loose so the bolts on the clutch are actually longer i'm gonna put them separate so we don't mix them up and they're also longer on the brake pedal all right so now that the faces are off let's go ahead and flip it over and under here we can see we got a bunch of little bolts or screws maybe to take out and they're all Phillips so there's some silver ones all around and then there's some black ones here but I think the black ones actually connect to the pedals I guess we'll take out the silvers first and see if that will cut it loose also guys it's kind of hard to see but there's two little screws right inside that crack there and you can only get them whenever the carpet gripper is in the upright position so all right, so we're on our last screw there, and looks like it's coming apart. Yeah, it is. Okay, so we need to be pretty careful here. Okay, so yeah, it does come up. And yeah, we do have wiring, guys, so we've got to be really careful with this cover. So probably need to cut it loose here. You guys can see that, so we're not snagging on them. Now we can move this whole top cover out of the way. And this is what our pedal set looks like inside. So yeah, very cool and very heavy duty, a lot better built than I thought it would be. So since we're gonna be working on the middle one, I think we should go ahead and take it off so it'd be easier. So let's go ahead and flip it around and we'll undo these four bolts here. All right, so this pedal should be loose completely and it is. But the other thing we need to do is we actually need to disconnect the position sensor here and also a ground. That was actually pretty tight. Put the little bolt back in so we don't lose it. And then we need to unplug the sensor. I guess one thing to note is the colors, which is black, white, and red from bottom to top. So I probably need to grab some kind of little pliers. It'd be easier. Let's see if we can unplug these things by pulling on them. Holding on pretty well, but they do come out. So they're definitely snug in there, but yeah, everything is completely loose. 
and you guys can see it's a pretty neat looking design so our new part here looks like replaces this bottom piece here or at least what it appears to be the only issue i see is that the plug that's on here is actually not connecting to another plug but just wire so we're just gonna have to match up the wires but yeah it looks like we need to take off this bolt here that holds the bottom part and hopefully this thing will just slide out but we'll see here in a second let's go ahead and get this bolt out so i just got an adjustable wrench but yeah i'm pretty impressed of how this logitech is put together Okay, so that was actually spring-loaded, and we can see the whole contraption here. And we do have like a little rubber stopper, and that's what was actually stopping it from, you know, going farther down. So yeah, it's a pretty, I guess, crude way of giving you feel, because you have the spring, and then you have a rubber stopper. So, so I haven't really looked at how this is all going to go together. Hopefully we can figure it out here. But we got a lot of adapters and and here's one with the rubber nub here. So I'm not sure exactly where all this goes because there was no instructions with this kit, unfortunately. But maybe we'll be able to figure it out here. So this replaces our sensor and the load arm itself. We just got to figure out what goes where. So I'm guessing that something needs to go on top of this. And it looks like this piece here fits on there. So we got different sizes even smaller here so <laughs> not too sure what i should be using but if we look inside the brake pedal i don't know if you guys can see there's a similar shape in there to something like this and i'm guessing that's where our spring is gonna go all right so after messing around with it here and there i think i figured it out and it's actually much simpler than it looks or at least i think i figured it out but yeah we have three of the same kind of parts and you can see that they're just a different length or height i guess on each of the nubs and on the other side they're all the same and so these are just adjustments on how quick the spring compresses so let me mock it up here real quick so this guy here is the other end which will go inside here and it goes on one side of the spring and then on the other side of the spring you're going to choose which size washer or adapter i guess you want to use so this is the smallest one so that's going to give us the most travel until you you know we bottom out and then when we do bottom out, we got a little rubber piece there that kind of squishes together. And then we start pushing on this load sensor here. So this is completely different the way it works, this whole sensor. This is a pressure sensor, which here we have a position sensor. And this is why it completely replaces that. You know, depending how much force you put into this thing is how much the car will break compared to, you know, just where the position of the pedal is. So it's all about the force. But yeah, I don't know. Now that I think about it, I think I'm just going to go ahead and use the medium one. That seems like a good compromise between, you know, the play and then the force applying. So we're going to put this bottom on here and it fits perfectly. And basically the way it works is when we start pushing the brake, it's going to compress and then we're going to start putting pressure into this load cell here that's going to, you know, read the amount of force that's being pushed and then output it to the electronics so yeah much more simpler we're not using anything existing here we're just using whatever they came with this kit so yeah hopefully that made sense now we're just gonna slide it in here just like that and we want our wire here to go out to the side where the other sensor is and now all we got to do is put our bolt back in so this might be a little bit tough because it is kind of pushing back on me got to compress it a bit there we go so yeah Pretty much that's the extent of how it assembles. Now, we're not going to feel too much here, but I don't know if you guys can see, but it is moving. And so this is not more of, like we talked about earlier about the position, but more of how much force that goes into here. So the brake pedal ain't going to move much. It's going to feel completely new than it was. So yeah, this should be interesting. So we're going to put the nut back on the bolt, tighten that up. And that looks pretty good right there. So yeah, guys, not too hard to install the actual part. And the harder part will probably be connecting the wires here. It's actually not too bad because they are color coded and they do match the colors here too. So I guess we can go ahead and do that next. We're just gonna match up the colors. So we got red here. I'm gonna grab the red one and we're gonna literally just slide it into the connector there. So just like that, make sure I go pretty deep in there. So our next one is white. And then we got the black one on the other end. All right, so yeah, now we're connected. So that's not too hard. Now you could, you know, if you're paranoid, maybe put some electrical tape in between and things like that, but this should be fine. We are going to permanently stick it to something. There's a double-sided tape on the other side, depending on where it wants to sit. Once we put the pedal back, we'll be able to see a little better where it should be. Well, let's go ahead and connect to the ground terminal here. Okay, yeah, so that's not too bad. Everything looks pretty 
good right there. So I'm probably gonna stick this somewhere right over here. I'll just say right here. That looks pretty good. We can go ahead, mount the pedal to the base. So yeah, technically now we're just gonna work in reverse order and put the whole thing back together. So let's put our cover back on. All right, so we got that back on there. So now we gotta be really careful and make sure everything lines up. Mostly we're just worried about those little wires underneath. And yeah, there we go. Now we can flip it around and install all these little silver bolts that we took out all around everywhere. So yeah guys, overall I would say this is not a bad little project and not too hard to do. I mean you do have to be a little bit careful with everything but as you can see it's not too hard just mostly taking a bunch of little screws out. But yeah, hopefully this will be all worth it and we can see how well our new pedal works. Alright, so all the little silver screws are on and now we just got to put our pedals on. And I'm just going to go ahead and put them back where they were in the middle of the brake pedal and the clutch. You know what guys, I think I'm putting these on backwards, which is uh, very funny. I think it's supposed to go like this. That makes more sense, right? Bigger portion going up. Yeah, I think that's right. Wow. I guess technically you could do it either way you want, but that does feel like that's the more correct way to me. So yeah, it looks like we are done here, guys. And yeah, I mean, these are gonna be back to normal and our brake here is not even moving at all, which seems kind of weird right now, but we'll see how it is when we actually use it because it doesn't have much movement in it. I mean, of course, I gotta push it a little farther for it to move, but it does move, just not much, maybe, you know, that much at the most. So yeah, hopefully this new sensor here is gonna give us a different kind of feeling and we'll see here in a second. All right, guys, so I got the pedal set mounted on our wheel stand 2.0 is what it's called. That Next Level Racing just released recently here, and it's quite a good value considering, you know, what kind of options you can have in the future with it. All right, so let's get Forza 4 up and running. And by the way, guys, I think my gas pedal is backwards, but it's fine the way it is, so I'm going to leave it for now. So hopefully you guys can see the pedals there a little bit. So we're going to grab a normal car here, which is a Ford GT, and let's see how the brakes feel. So I'm gonna see if I'm gonna step on it. Oh yeah, guys, that feels awesome. Wow, that feels so real. I'm gonna slam it. Oh yeah, that's beautiful, guys. And you can see there we were like sliding, like, you know, that's all the power it has to stop. So it's a perfect amount of pressure. Here's a little up closer view of the pedals. So I'm gonna go ahead and start. So I'm going about 80 right now. So I'm gonna slam it. Yeah, and that's all the way for sure, because the whole car is sliding pretty much. So, I mean, anti-lock brake is on, but yeah. It feels really good, guys. I'm impressed, honestly. This is a huge upgrade. Like, you wouldn't think, like, what's the big deal, but <laughs> it's kind of a big deal. Oh, yeah. So yeah, I think the biggest difference here is that it actually feels linear and predictable. I mean, it's just amazing how much of a difference it makes. You wouldn't think so, but it actually does, surprisingly. So yeah, really liking this new brake, and I think we're gonna have a lot more fun here with the G920. If you have any of these wheels, also including the G27, I'm pretty sure, the G920, the G29, and the new G923 also, it really will make a difference, guys. Another thing I'm really noticing is that at higher speeds, when you push the brake, you have a really good feel of what's going on compared to before. Like, you can feel how much the brake is going, you know, into the tires, so you can really feel it much better. You can be a lot more precise in braking. So I really think this mod is worth it. And I think this company is in the UK. So if you are going to buy it, you're going to have to get some international shipping is what I did. And that makes it a little bit more pricey. But if you love your Logitech wheels and you're looking for a very good substantial upgrade, I would definitely recommend this load cell. A little rusty, hasn't played in a while. And Mustangs, they love to slide everywhere. So... All right, guys, well, hopefully you enjoyed this video. If you did, then hit that like button. Also, check out our other videos. We've got quite a few simulator reviews and Logitech steering wheels, the shifter there, also the Xbox Series X and S, and also the PlayStation 5. And if you are interested in videos like this, stay tuned for more. And as always, thanks for watching, and I'll catch you on the next one. Peace.